Cornell Real Talk. I just watched episode 13 of Wicked Tuna this year, and what a nail biter. It's time now for Wicked Tuna Real Talk, the show where each week after every episode of Wicked Tuna, the captains come on in and give us a little bit more insight into what just happened. My name is Mike Salk. I'll be your host. Joining us now are the three captains who ended the week in the top three spots on the leaderboard. The fleet's current leader, Captain Dave Marciano, the hard merchandise. In second place, it's Captain Dave Carrero, fishingvesseltuna.com. And right behind them in third place, Captain TJ Ott of Hot Tuna. Great to have all three of you guys here once again. There is a ton to talk about from this episode. I think a great place to start is the team that has now emerged as the boat to beat. Hard merchandise started out the week in third place, but after an amazing trip where Marciano and Jay caught three tuna, the guys jumped in a first place ahead of last season's champion, FishingVesselTuna.com. Marciano, you guys did not start fast, and it looked like it was going to be yet another year of yeah. you guys trying to play catch-up, and yet here you are leading the fleet in week 13, not too much time left. What turned your season around? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, hey, I go back to what I've said always before. A little bit of luck goes a long way in this business. You know, we do the same thing we've always done. We get out there, we fish, and we had some luck, you know, namely, too, like that double we had ahead. Double header, you know, the fish stayed apart. Had they swam together, we could have lost them both. And just like that, we could have went from three fish to one fish. A little bit of luck, the fish spread out, we did good. 13 fish in the last nine weeks, I mean, that's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you guys great. are on a pretty darn good yep. roll. Now, you always say, hey, I'm just here to feed my family, and I just want to make sure Joe can go through college. And the, I mean, we hear it over and over, <laughs> yeah, the same yeah. refrain <laughs> from you, but what about pride? What about He's the here idea? more than just to feed his family. You want to be in that top spot. Oh, well, that's Who the heck I are you know. know. I mean, is there some competition? It's only you in your place, Dave. Huh? I mean, how often is it? Your nose just through an inch. Wait, how often, Two inches. How often is it where you're, you're behind my boat? Your boat is always behind mine. It only does eight yeah, knots. Well, I know, but that's what I mean. So if I can't get ahead of you with speed, I'll get ahead of you one way or another. All I have to, I have two words, unblank believable. Or, <laughs> I believe that's it, man. Say. It's hard work and dedication. It's paying yeah. off. I don't think it's luck. I think you're just fishing harder. I mean, he's out there on the meat, and he's right. taking advantage of the bites. Yeah, I did actually get out of the chair this trip, so I must have been working you a little to. bit harder. fish on. <laughs> Well, I use this word with you all the time, Dave, motivation. I know you're motivated, certainly, by competition. What is the motivation like when you see Marciano on the top of the leaderboard? Besides my eye twitch in a mile a minute right now, <laughs> I'm more motivated now than I've ever been. I mean, I mean, I would have never, I would have never thought. I would have, I would have never guessed this in a, in 10 seasons. Dave, you, you blew everyone else out of the water last year. I mean, it wasn't even close. You won going away. How different is it now with everybody right on your heels and right with you being part of the pack? Every year is different. Last year, there was just simply not a lot of fish around, and we were just able to capitalize on every fish that came under the boat. Every bite, we were able to catch the majority of the fish. You know, we did a good job last year, you know, with the amount of fish that were there, and that was, it was very limited. This year, there's a lot of fish around. There's more fish around this year than we've seen in yeah. many years, and I think we yeah. all agree on Even that. Even our stummies can catch them. Yeah, and it's just, <laughs> this year, it's, it's, it's anybody's game, you know? Right place, right time, the fish are biting, they're aggressive. And, uh, you know, whoever really puts in the yep. most time and makes all the right moves is, is going to be on top. How much more comfortable are you on top as opposed to fighting to get there? I'm a lot more comfortable on top. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't think anybody likes being second, third, or fourth. You know, it's just, uh, it's, it's more stressful. And when it's more stressful, you usually don't perform the way you would like to. TJ, uh, for the hot tuna, you showed up here a couple of years ago mm -hmm. with, with big expectations, mm -hmm. and now you find yourself right in the chase to actually win this thing this year. How, how important would that be for you and your crew? It'd be huge. I mean, you know, we're there, we're competing, we're right there till the end, and we'd love to beat these guys, but, you know, I, I, I thought I was going to have to come beat the black boat. I didn't know I was going to beat the sausage <laughs> wagon over there. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, Are you better I, tell I, I Jay that's another it. name for the boat. we got the <laughs> Humpty Dumpty, <laughs> the Ugly Duckling, the and now we got the wagon. sausage wagon. I kind of like it's that It's got all the though. flags, <laughs> like a sausage wagon you in Midtown. Your, yeah. Is there a sausage flag you could put up there with <laughs> the uh, other I'll three? We'll have to work on what that. What do you have up there? you got the American flag, the Italian the flag, flag, and you got the hard merchandise flag. Well, now you just need a big sausage on I'll have to get Nancy, you know, to needle point a sausage flag for us. That's all. Why, uh, why do you think that you three have been as successful as you are this year, TJ? Um, we're just putting in the time. That's really what it comes down to. The fishing's good. The fish are there. And it's going to come down to the guy who puts in the most time and really gets you know, lucky and lands those fish. I mean, that's what it boils down to. 
Dave, we saw you and Jay fighting two tuna at the same time this week, which is a challenge in and of itself, but it actually went beyond that because you actually had a tuna hanging off the back of the boat at the same yep. time. Just to add another little challenge, you've got the old boat, the sausage wagon, <laughs> the ugly duckling. You got you and Jay, only two of you on the boat. You got another one hanging off the back. Let's see how they handled it. Oh, Mark, one right on the bait, Dave. One up high? Yeah, like eight. Yeah. You're rather dark, Randy. Yeah. We're on, we're on, we're on, we're on, we're on. Well, you got it? We're on. This is as good as it gets. Oh, 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 We're on. We got two on now. We got two on now. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> we're on again. He must have grabbed it just as I started reeling. Now the tricky bot is going to be getting them both aboard the boat. We just got to keep them from crossing, Jay. Take it out of gear. Turn in the wrong way, Jay. We're gonna lose it this out of fish. Not only do we have two fish on, we've still got one fish hanging on the side. We could lose one of these fish we're fighting getting tangled around his gill plate. What do you want me to do? Side. Get out of his gills. Right off to the bass, Jay. Fighting two fish is a double-edged sword. It's a great thing. You got two on, that's cool. But if those lines cross, we could lose them both. What we have here is chaos. We're going to have to fight these fish on opposite sides of the boat. Two fish on, baby. It's going to reduce the likelihood of those lines crossing. Slack, slack, slack. If you have one of these, we get close, we'll deal with friends. All right, so it looks like you could lose both of your fish here, Marciano. What are you going to do? You got two on the line. You've got one hanging off the back of the boat. How stressful is that for you and Jay? Yeah, it's it's stressful, but, you know, it's only a matter of we got to take some action, right? I mean, that was good fishing. We didn't even have a chance to get the one in the boat. We were on again. We got them up on the side. We got them out of the way so we could fight the other two fish. And, you know, we made it happen. What that's are the all. numbers? You got the Fortunately, numbers that that, that's where Jay's experience <laughs> comes in. You know, the kid's been on the boat a long time. Not, he did great driving the boat. He did great fighting the fish. That's a tough act for anybody to juggle. Dave, what's the key to that? What's the key to reeling in two fish at the same time? I mean, collectively work together. You know, you have to. I mean, like you said, he had the two fish on. He had the fish hanging. And I've seen it before. The one fish runs underneath the fish that's hanging, and as it's running, it, it saws it right off. You lose one fish, and then you break the other one off. I mean, you guys did everything you needed to. I mean, you gotta work together. And you didn't even bump Jay off the wheel like Tyler did. No, no, I, no, I didn't have to. The kid was doing good, though. How often would you say that happens, that you get two on the same, at the same time? Dave? I mean, Paul and I, we've, and Sandra, we've had four on at times. I mean, four, it does happen. It I does wish happen, it happened but, every time. Yeah. But what again, there's, there's pros and cons to it. You know, again, having four on is great, but you yeah. really, it's tough to land all four of them. What is the probability rate on something like that? Once you get, let's just say two, the what's the probability more under the boat, rate? you know? No, you I got, have a probability of losing. You got 50 one. under the boat, you know, you might get a double. Well, over on the Hot Tuna, TJ, your beef last week with Dave on the dot-com was still fresh in your mind. It clearly was a big motivating factor for you and the Hot Tuna team all this week. Let's take a look. You see the black bottle all the way down there? The Hot Tuna is currently number two on the leaderboard, and .com's in the lead, thanks to us. Last week, Dave lied to us after we put him onto a hot spot. Any bites up that way this afternoon? Not a one. He told us fishing was slow, but he actually caught three fish and raked in 14 grand. Wow. Deck load full of tuna! While causing us to miss out on the bite. That's a pretty low move. Moving forward, he's out of my network, out of my circle of trust. Now all he is to me is competition, nothing else. It's ultimately our goal to make sure we outfish Dave. All right, TJ, the, the so-called bad blood between you and Dave, it seemed to really motivate you and really give you a little bit of extra fuel to the fire this week. How, how motivated are you by what had happened the week earlier with Dave? Well, I mean, I, I want to win this thing, obviously, and I want to beat these guys, but that definitely added some fuel to the fire for sure. You saw him lose a fish early in the week. The dot-com guys saw you catch a fish uh, fairly early as well. And... Dave says he feels cursed. Now, this kind of goes against the, the Dave view of luck, where he doesn't believe in luck. How could he feel cursed? I, I don't know. Maybe karma got him. Karma bit him <laughs> a little Italian bit. Italian witch doctor. Yeah. <laughs>
What is it? <laughs> <laughs> Dave, from your side of things, TJ really seemed to be gunning for you this week. How did that make you feel? Every, regardless of what happened last week, everybody's always going to be gunning for you. I mean, especially if you're on top, everybody's got that bullseye on you. Everybody wants to be that boat. And that's just part of fishing. The top guy, everybody wants. That top guy is hated, period. Yep. Marciano, you are that top guy right now, and you weren't here last week as uh, we got to really explore in depth what had happened with uh, with the other two characters sitting next to you. <laughs> what do you make of it? How 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 off, how common are disagreements with other fishermen? How big a deal are they? It's not a big deal. Look, it happens. We're all under a lot of stress. We all want to catch the most fish. The fish are worth money. As much as we try and get along and be great buddies, right? When it comes down to it, out fishing. I want to do better than Dave, Dave wants to do better than me, and TJ wants to do better than both of us. That's what we really feel like. It's, you know, as much as we like to say, hey, it's great, you all got them too, when it really comes down to it, you know, humans in general, we, we're a little bit selfish in nature like that, right? That's just how we are, so arguments happen. How often do you find that it's difficult to swallow your pride and just say, look, I'm sorry, let's move on? More often than I would like. You know what I mean, right? I, I have to say I'm sorry all the time. You know, I wish I could say I was perfect, but, you know, no one here is. We all make mistakes, and, you know, hopefully, we, I think we've seen it, where all of us, you know, we, we pick up the pieces, we say we're sorry, and we move on. We man up and move on. You don't have to say that to Jay, though, do you? No, Jay's a different story. <laughs> he's just a crew member. You don't have yeah, to say he's sorry a crew to him. member. He's not like he's a real person or something. <laughs> <laughs> he's come a long way. He's, he's doing great, I yeah, think. He is. He, he is. Yeah, I no, think Jay has really right. developed no, into a phenomenal without, without a doubt, I mean, again, he, he earned his keep, you know, just this trip with those two fish. He did everything right. He did. And, and think about it. You guys had, most of the time, he's yelling and screaming <laughs> with one fish. You had three on, and he barely right. said two words. Right. All right, every <laughs> season, we just see a little glimpse into the type of food that you guys prepare when you're out in the water. Waiting for a bite, each boat's a little bit different. We've seen Jay on hard merchandise eat straight out of a can. That was unimpressive. <laughs> and two weeks ago, Mike Ott prepared what looked like a gourmet meal for the hot tuna guys. This week, Dotcom was cooking sausages that rolled around in the rocky, rocky. Seas. Got him from the sausage boat. <laughs> <laughs> Is that where you? He could just pull the name and got all sorts sausage? of sausages on there. Who's the? What's the best? Uh, what's the best boat to go to for good food, DJ? I don't know, man. I mean, I, I like to eat. I hate to tell you. <laughs> I don't know if you know that or not. <laughs> I, I got, you know, but I'll tell you, the best thing I find we eat out there is if someone gives us a piece of fresh halibut or something like that, we'll bake it up. And but yeah, if someone needs food, they can come to us. We'll hook them up. We've been on your boat plenty yeah, of times. Yeah, yeah. Time. He's, he's, got, got, he's, got all, he's got all the amenities. Now, Dave, you know, on the other <laughs> hand, when he's cooking his dinner, that starts at 5 o'clock in the morning with hot canned food on his exhaust manifold that's ready by 5 p.m. Do you have room on your boat to cook anything? No, we don't ever, we don't ever, you know, look, we get a grill once in a while. If it's calm out, we'll start the grill. But if it's too rough, the coals just get put out by the waves, so we don't even bother. So you just don't eat well on your boat? We, we eat canned. Well, it's in a can. It's good. Right? Swiss rolls. Yeah, right? Do you cook it on a manifold? What? You cook no, it on we put it in front of the bus heater. In front of the bus heater, all right. I got to open the engine hatch to do that. That's too much work. Do you guys have forks on the boat? What? You have forks on there, too? No, we have they, one. the chum ladle. One we have fork. one fork. You have to what? share the they fork? They barehand it. I allocate one fork for the season. <laughs> He makes Jay feed it to him. Uh, I, I buy a fresh <laughs> box, and you get one fork for the season. You get one fork, you get one spoon. <laughs> Do you think that Mike, <laughs> having Mike on the boat has made your boat more uh, successful this year? I, I think he's come, come out of the fog, yeah. He started out rusty, but... I think he's definitely been an asset. Well, for I just us. meant from the eating perspective. Oh, Do you yeah, think well, a, a I mean, yeah. full crew is a happy My cholesterol's crew? gone up a bunch of points and uh, <laughs> I don't know. I've Food been is fuel weird. for the crew. But no, it's it's at the end of the day when when everyone's got a job and, and when you're tired and you just want to have a hot meal or, or, or just kinda, you know, relax for a little bit, it's nice to have somebody doing that for you. And you don't have to do it, you know? Dave, who cooks on your boat? We, we, we all take chance. We all take turns doing it. I mean, mailman was great to have on the boat. Mailman used to love cooking breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But, you know, with Sandro and I and Jordy, we'll make one good meal a day, and that's typically at night. Mm. So but you kind of wait all day for that? No, and... we, you know, we eat during the day, but it's usually cold foods, you know. No fish. No fish. No, no fish. fish. No fish on your boat. No fish. Or no fish on anyone's boat. No, they boat. can eat fish. He doesn't eat fish. Eat you just don't like it. I don't eat fish. I just catch them. Marciano, when you guys are out there, what kind of food do you and Jay prepare for yourselves? Um, you know, we, normally we have a grill, right? If it's calm out, we'll cook on the grill, maybe some sausages, some hamburgers. But that being said, it's not often that common enough where we can cook in the grill, so we throw a couple of canned goods in front of the bus heater or, or <laughs> eat them right out the can is good enough for me. TJ, for people who haven't lived out on the open water like that, what, 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 is the, 
What is the quality of life living on the ocean for a period of days or a week? <laughs> I'm kind of spoiled on my rig. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, man. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you are. You know, we have freezers and refrigerators and ovens and TV. Sat TV. <laughs> I mean, really, <laughs> my boat is built to travel, you know, long distances. And Marciano, more for you then, because you're, you're the one who's out there without a lot of those creature comforts. Right. How, what, is, what is that experience like over hey, a couple like, of days? It's like camping. It really is. It's like camping. And you know what? Those calm nights when we can start the grill, once in a while we'll even have a bag of marshmallows to roast over over the uh, <laughs> bowls when we're done, right? I, I mean, that's how Jay and I look at it. We get in, we don't have a shower. We don't, you know, if we're out for five days, it's five days with no shower. I mean, we just, it's camping. It's roughing it. But, you know, we're not there to look good. We're there to catch fish. If you come over to us, we'll share with you. I know, you've worked we'll this share. up in the past, TJ. You've worked we'll this up. up. Mm -hmm. No, TJ is very generous when they have extra, and if we're near each other, he's, he's made us some egg sandwiches yeah. for breakfast sometimes. I was out for... more curious about the shower thing. What are you guys talking about? No, I've never given him a shower. I mean, oh, <laughs> he's going to have to scrub himself. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the fleet has been fishing it now for more than three months. This week marked the beginning of the countdown to the end, and now there are only two weeks left until the season closes. Guys, you've all been there, especially this time of the year. I mean, it, it's a long way into the season. When your body is, is as, as exhausted as it can be and you've been out and it's just as grueling as it can be, what keeps you going? I mean, this is it. I mean, it's, we're in the it's bottom of the ninth yep, inning, right. you know? Uh, the score's basically tied, you know. Right. We're not going to give up. Everybody wants to hit that last home run. It's it's almost over, too. And, you know, tuna fishing is like banging your head against the wall. It feels great when you stop. <laughs> what do you come up with this stuff? <laughs> it's going to be incredibly tense. What do you see happening down the stretch, Marciano? You got the you got the lead, now you got to try to protect it. I'm going to hang on to it. That's all. It's wishful gonna... thinking. Yeah, we'll see huh? about that. Come I don't on. know, you know. I'm going to go see an Italian witch doctor and put a curse on you and put you right out of the game for the rest of the season. Dave, right. I know you're motivated. What do you need to do to get back out there in the last couple of weeks and get in front of Marciano? We're going to go out there and pound it out. That's it. We're going to do the same thing we do every year. And TJ? I'm just going to pray for the best, man. I'm going to hope the rod bends and we, we can actually capitalize and land them, you know? <laughs> no more rubber hooks. And in the meantime, keep eating whatever Mike makes. Whatever Babaloni puts in front of you, there's a good chance it's going to disappear. <laughs> it's a good chance yeah. that's the end of that sucker. All yeah. right, well, that's all the time that we have for this week. want to give you guys, all three of you, a big thank you. Captain Dave Marciano of Hard Merchandise, Captain Dave Carrero of FishingVesselTuna.com, and, of course, Captain TJ Ott of Hot Tuna. You can catch all the Real Talk episodes very easy. Just go to NatGeoTV.com slash Real Talk. We'll be back again. And next week, right after the all-new episode of Wicked Tuna, next Sunday, 9 o'clock on National Geographic Channel. On next week's episode, the old, with only two weeks left of fishing until the season closes, the fleet is going to fight to earn final paychecks. On Real Talk next week, Marciano and TJ both back again. Captain Tyler McLaughlin of the Pinwheel will join us as well. You can get your Wicked Tuna fix by liking us on Facebook or following us on Twitter to get daily updates. That's a social media deal. We will catch you guys next time on Wicked Tuna Real Talk.